All right, so we're going to dive into some of the conceptual background on the between subjects t-test. Now, this is the version of the t-test that you would use if you had two independent samples, hence why this is also known as the independent samples t-test. So one place you might see this is if you have an experiment that has two groups, a basic control group and an experimental group, and you want to compare the two to see if there's a mean difference between the two groups. Or stated a little bit more precisely, if both of your samples are coming from populations that have the same mean. So the actual formula for this t-test isn't really that different from other t-tests we've covered. We have a mean difference in the numerator, and we have a standard error in the denominator. But now because we're looking at two different samples, and we know nothing for sure about the populations they come from, it adds extra layers of complexity. So to break this down a little bit more, let's try and take it on one piece at a time, just conceptually. Let's start with the numerator here. And specifically, let's start with M1 minus M2. This is actually probably the simplest part. We have the mean of sample 1 minus the mean of sample 2. We know how to calculate means. That's nice and simple. Then over here, we have mu1 minus mu2. Now, I realize my Greek letters aren't that great, but play along. So we have the mean of population 1, or the mean of the population sample 1 came from, minus the mean of the population sample 2 came from. Now, these values are actually based upon the null hypothesis. So specifically, the null hypothesis for between samples t-test states that mu1 is equal to mu2. So in other words, this mean difference right here is 0. So really, when we break this down and look at it, what we have is the mean of sample 1 minus the mean of sample 2 divided by our new standard error. Now, this new standard error is the meat of this new t-test. And it's where most of the changes and most of the conceptual work goes on. Now, the purpose of the standard error doesn't change. It's how much of a mean difference should we expect due to sampling error alone. And so in that respect, it's the same. But recognize that we're now sampling from a population twice, not just once. And so we actually have two sources of sampling error. The sampling error associated with sample 1 and the sampling error associated with sample 2. So this new standard error, which is called the estimated standard error of the mean difference, lets us know how far apart, on average, we should expect these two samples to be. Now, when we break this down a little bit more and actually think about what it represents, what we're really doing is we're adding the standard error that comes, excuse me, the estimated standard error from sample 1 and adding it with the estimated standard error for sample 2. And conceptually, that's roughly how it plays out. So you may remember that just the standard error of the mean is your standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Now, we could rewrite that algebraically 
to be the square root of variance divided by n. Now, let's look at this estimated standard error of the mean difference a little bit more. What we really have here is the square root of the variance of sample 1 divided by sample 1's sample size plus the variance of sample 2 divided by sample 2's sample size. So really, when you look at that, we just have two standard errors added together, which makes sense. We need to add up how far apart we would expect these two things to be, which is represented by each of its standard error. So that's really what we're doing. And conceptually, that's how the background of a between samples t-test really plays out. We have a mean difference, and then we divide that mean difference by how much difference we would expect on average just due to random chance. Then we still have the same compare the observed statistic to a critical value to see if it falls in the critical regions to determine whether or not we end up rejecting this null hypothesis and accepting the alternative that these two samples came from a population came from populations whose means were not equal.